Hey guys, Justin Bryant here from selfmadesuccess.com. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 side jobs that pay good money in 2017 so that you can do them while still having a base full-time career. You can do these things on the side, many of which are online or things that you just do locally. So they pay very well. You can make 20, 30, 40 or more dollars per hour on most of these if not more so the first one is you can sell t-shirts online this has become a very popular thing because making t-shirts and selling them is not near as hard as it used to be it's not as expensive and it's not as time-consuming so what you can do is you come up with a t-shirt design of course that's original that's not done that's not copyrighted um, or trademarked already so don't try to do any kind of logos or try to steal a slogan from a company or anything like that do your research before you make a shirt but if you're gonna do this you want to use a site like teespring so you could go to teespring.com you would go to start designing you have a button here button here you click start designing and then it takes you to the page where you start creating a shirt so when you create a shirt when you upload your logo or whatever your design is you sell it and then you also have the um, option to buy it if you want to see an example of what it looks like before you start selling it so you create these t-shirts and you can make very good money from them because they're original because you're selling something that no one else has it's a type of art and the great thing about art of course is you can never have too much of it because people are always looking for different ways to express themselves but with teespring you don't have to order a mass production of t-shirts and then buy them and then sell them and ship them like you usually would in the past now teespring does it on demand so when you buy the shirt online through the teespring store you actually have it created through teespring teespring ships it to them and they take care of all that stuff for you in exchange for a commission of whatever the sale price is so it's much better it's much easier they just take a commission uh, many companies are going to this type of uh, business model because it's more beneficial and low cost for the creators and it just benefits everybody much better so Teespring if you want to create shirts um, you could go to a freelance site if you have like an idea but you're not really great with um, creating art and stuff online you could take that idea and take it to Fiverr or Upwork which are two great freelance sites that will allow you to um, have artists create a professional design that you could use and then you could put that on a shirt so that's one thing you can do you could even go to a graphic design only service but those will do just fine and an example would be Philip DeFranco if you've ever seen the Philip DeFranco uh, YouTube channel he's got millions of subscribers you've probably uh, seen a video of his before at some point Philip DeFranco would sell shirts on Teespring you can see he has a store here and one of his more recent ones um, in 2017 that he was selling was the kind of presidential shirt design uh, DeFranco 2024 you know so he was selling that for $23 basically and um, it looks like he sold about 1355 shirts so that's a very good campaign that he did and he was only selling them for like a week or two or something like that so that shows you the potential that shows you that famous people like youtubers are doing this and this is the platform you want to use you literally just go to the design page design it and sell it number two you can drive with uber or lyft so if you probably have a car if you have a car and it's a four-door 
of some sort, then you can actually give people a lift as kind of a freelance taxi driver. You can take as much work as you want or as little work as you want. You can work whatever hours you want and you can get paid very well. Many drivers will make $20, $30 an hour um, depending on where you are. But if, especially if you're close to a big city of some sort, you could do very well. And you don't just make money from giving people rides, you can also make money for referring other drivers. So you also want to do that, refer other people's, uh, with your invite code, you can refer other drivers and get paid based on what they do as well. So what you do is you go to uber.com, become a driver up here, click this button, or you have a form that you can go ahead and fill out here. Um, Lyft, also the top competitor for Uber has a place where you can become a driver here as well. And depending on what you want, you want to look at the way they pay. Um, they're very similar. Uber probably has a bigger base of customers, but in some cases Lyft might pay a little bit better. So it just really depends on how much work is out there, where you live, and uh, which one makes more sense for you. I think Lyft actually has a little bit better referral system, but you can drive with them. If you have a four-door car that's uh, in good shape and you have no prior background itch issues and things like that. Number three, sell things in video games. So if you like playing video games, you can actually have kind of a side gig playing video games and making money from it. So now obviously you can do like gameplay videos on YouTube uh, like the Rad Brad or like how PewDiePie got started or you can play a game called Second Life where you're basically like a second version of yourself living a different life in a virtual reality. So instead of you know, having to make a bunch of YouTube videos and stuff, you basically just play the game. And just like in any other video game, when you make money, um, the difference with this one is you can exchange that money for actual dollars, real money in um, the real world. So if you make good money in the game, you make some money in real life. And someone has actually made a million plus dollars doing this. And what she, her name is Anshi Chung. What she did is she sold real estate and things like that. You can read about it here. I'll have a link to an article for you here. It's on fortune.com, Fortune Magazine. And she literally did virtual real estate in the Second Life game here, which is at secondlife.com. And she made over a million dollars doing this. And she has become pretty famous because of this and was one of the, was the first ever virtual millionaire on that game and maybe even on any of these types of games because there are other games like this but um, that just shows you there's quite a bit of potential a lot of people play these games they have over a million people play these games now uh, on just second life alone plus they have other ones that are more futuristic type games and stuff but um, you can literally make money by starting a business within a game. So it's a lot less risk than starting a business in real life. Number four is Amazon Flex. So if you don't mind, say, delivering packages while you're out driving, kind of like Uber, except, you know, it's just Amazon. And you can make $18 to $25 an hour, work your own schedule, much like Uber or Lyft. But what you're doing, instead of driving people and having people in your car, you're actually just delivering packages locally. And um, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. And uh, you're working for one of the biggest, most um, reliable companies out there. Amazon is definitely not going anywhere. Of course, Uber and Lyft have had some of their problems. They've been under fire about different things, especially Uber. But Amazon's been around a while. They keep growing. They're a gigantic company. They're one of the four or five big companies that I believe are going to be the future of pretty much everything as far as our daily lives. So 
you can really depend on um, Amazon if you want to make a good extra income. Number five is you can freelance your skills. So if you want to make money from your writing, from your graphic design, from your marketing skills, from programming, music, voiceovers, transcriptions, whatever it is that you do fairly well, you can do it for other people on Fiverr and Upwork. So these allow you to get paid to help people um, by doing services for them. Now, Fiverr, you're going to attract uh, people without as big of a budget usually for gigs. Many, uh, the reason it's called Fiverr is because everything starts at $5. And then you can kind of, as you become better, you can work your way up to a... Um, a way to offer gigs that are more expensive that maybe are a few hundred dollars per gig but Fiverr is not going to have as big of clients as rich of clients as say Upwork but Upwork you're going to have stronger competition in other words they're going to be more professional people with better resumes so you kind of have to weigh it you might try both Upwork is great for real big projects if you need um, somebody to create prototypes to find engineers to find people to create computer programs for you I mean there's all kinds of things that you can have done with Upwork and Fiverr of course is great as well they can do book covers you can do blog posts for people etc so if you have any skill that you can freelance that you feel people would want then um, Fiverr just go up there to become a seller right up there in the header of the website top right corner and Upwork you have top right corner a button where it says become a freelancer click that and go through the process number six you can tutor people so if you don't mind working with people one-on-one -on -one and you're very good in certain subjects maybe that students in high school college etc would need help with and you understand them very well maybe you are a teacher and you're actually practicing these currently then that would be even better but you can do online tutoring they basically have a video chat platform much like Skype or you know video calling on smartphones where you can personally help them with chemistry math physics um, history English whatever it is and you are helping students really who need it many times working with younger people who uh, just need to get those grades to really get their lives going and you can make a really big impact on people doing this so tutor.com is probably the biggest one with the most traffic I would start there then I would also try WizAnt and WizAnt is a direct competitor to Tutor.com, but they both can do very well for you. So you can do you know, online lessons, um, in-person lessons are actually offered with WizAnt. I don't think in-person is really um, offered with Tutor.com, but um, Tutor. Either way, you're probably going to want to stick to online anyway. Online is probably the way to go where you just video chat with people but tutoring is a great side gig number seven is you can sell photos so if you want to maybe be an amateur photographer you don't have to have any kind of credentials to do this or experience you can just take photos that you already have on your phone for instance and use the FOP app to upload them allowing you to start selling your photos right away and as you can see you can um, actually sell your photos for you know whatever you want to sell them for and for each photo you sell you get 50 percent of the revenue and then you can sell the same photo over and over and over unlimited times because it's basically a digital download for people so um, it's a great way for you to uh, make money from photos you're already gonna have photos pretty much everybody takes photos with all these great smartphone cameras now and it you literally don't have to even upload the photos to your computer or anything you can just 
have the FOP app, which is free, and then automatically take it from your photo gallery on your phone straight to the app. Or you can go the more professional route and use something like Shutterstock. And this is where a lot of more professional photographers go. Shutterstock, iStock Photo, places like that that are huge stock photo websites. You can make royalties from your photos. And this is where a lot of companies, big companies and stuff will go to get their uh, book photos, video photos, blog post photos and things like that that they need. Um, so Shutterstock, kind of the bigger, more professional one. You can just become a contributor by going up here and clicking that link. Uh, FOP, you can just download the app, which is available in the App Store for Apple and Google Play Store for Android devices. And so either way, you can earn royalties from your images. Number eight, Airbnb. So Airbnb is a travel peer-to-peer uh, -peer service, basically, where you can host people, you can do tours for people, you can have people stay in a part of your house or your entire house for, you know, a vacation, and then you get paid, and this cuts out any kind of hotels or hotel booking sites or any of that kind of stuff. So many people are getting to where they want more of a living experience in the city or destination they want to take a vacation to. And by having Airbnb, people can stay in homes of people who actually live in that city. So it gives you more of a taste of what it's really like to be there what it's like to live there, what the culture is like, and things like that, instead of where, you know, a hotel room is pretty much the same wherever you go. So Airbnb, become a host, go up to the top right corner, click become a host, and w walk through these steps, and it will allow you to uh, sell experiences, let people stay in your home, and uh, allow people to just have really cool vacations and allowing you to get paid because of it. Number nine, you can sell digital products. So by digital products, I usually mean information products. So you can also sell software. You can also sell uh, software services like a uh, Buffer or Hootsuite or GetResponse or something like that where you sell like a marketing software but it's as a service where they pay monthly. But those can be pretty complicated. I mean, you could even sell apps. Those are technically digital products, but it would be easier for you to start out doing information products. So for instance, you could sell a course where you basically take videos of yourself or your screen teaching somebody how to do something, whether it's uh, code, coding a piece of software, whether it's building a website, whether it's how to market a business, etc. And you can upload these courses to a site like udemy.com or you can also try Teachable or uh, Skillshare and sell these courses and make as much as a few hundred dollars each time somebody takes the course. Or you could do um, books. I actually have published a few books um, and some people publish a few books a week they mass produce books and that's their business some people just do a few bestsellers um, but Kindle direct publishing at kdp.amazon.com and I'll have links to all these pages for you so you don't need to memorize them but um, is where you sell books on Amazon and Amazon of course is I believe the best place to sell books, especially if you um, just want the most amount of traffic to them without having to do too much marketing yourself. So you get 70% royalties, um, you're in the major companies like the US, UK, Canada, Germany, India, France, Italy, Spain, etc. You can do nonfiction, fiction, kids books, um, biographies, whatever it is you want to do. 
And if the book is doing well, this is kind of a side note, but you also want to um, use create space and make a physical version of the book if it's popular. See down here, you have create space and you just go to that link there and it will allow you to uh, kind of like how Teespring works you have the book published on demand when people buy it so you don't have to have them mass produced you don't have to ship them from your own garage it's basically all taken care of by create space for a fee for each sale and they can get a physical copy of the book instead of just the ebook so by doing this, you save a lot of money, you save a lot of time, you save a lot of headaches. But uh, as far as digital products, I recommend going with an information product like a book or a course first. And also you can do Turo. Turo is a service where if you have a vehicle, you can actually just list it and have people use it. Like a peer-to-peer -peer service. So this is basically the Airbnb of cars and if you have a decent car that's in good shape people might want to rent that instead of going through an expensive service like Enterprise or National Car Rental or you know any of these big corporation car rental services instead they could rent the cars from their peers and they they do handle insurance insurance partner as you can see there is Liberty Mutual Insurance so if somebody uh, does something to your car um, they can insure it but it, it you basically do it per day you do like a fee per day of what you're willing to accept for your car and if you don't drive all the time or you have a spare car that you don't drive every day you can make some extra money as a side gig with um, your car. So Turo.com is the place to do that. You would just go to this button up here in the middle of the page that says list your car. So if you got something from this video, if you feel like you learned something that's helpful, please like and subscribe so I can create more videos like this for you. Also, as far as adding to the topic or letting me know what you thought about the video let me know in the comments I would love to get your feedback and I'd also love to add to this topic if you want to uh, share your experiences with some of these services and all of the links that I mentioned all of these show notes uh, related content to this video for you to get the most out of this information will all be on one page for you at selfmadesuccess.com so you can go there for that, or I will have the link available to you in the video description. So other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a great day.